here in Berlin, Donald Trump and Vladimir Putin loom large over President Obama's meetings. The rhetoric from the president-elect, as well as his friendly outreach to Russia, has German Chancellor Angela Merkel concerned. Now, Mr. Obama and Chancellor Merkel hope to extend European sanctions on Russia for its military intervention in Ukraine, which happened to expire around the exact same time that Trump takes office. They're also making the case that trade ties should be strengthened despite Mr. Trump's plans to rewrite or cancel several free trade agreements. In an article today, the two wrote, quote, we find ourselves at a crossroads and we will never return to a pre-globalization economy. Now, tomorrow, the leaders of Spain, France, Italy and the UK will all join President Obama's serious conversation. I've sought a constructive relationship with Russia, but what I have also been is realistic in recognizing that there is some significant differences in how uh, Russia views the world and how we view the world. I would not advise people who feel strongly uh, or are concerned about uh, some of the issues that have been raised during the course of the campaign. I wouldn't advise them uh, to be silent. President Obama has just set a new record for rules and regulations, his administration spitting out 527 pages worth in just one day as he races to put his fingerprint on virtually every corner of American life and business. According to the Competitive Enterprise Institute, the administration has just shattered the old record for pages of regulations and rules published by the in-house journal, The Federal Register. American Christians have seen their freedoms eroding in recent years, even deep in the Bible Belt itself. One of this nation's most distinguished fire officials, Kelvin Cochran, was fired from his job here in Atlanta for something he wrote on his own time and that didn't even have anything to do with his job. It's an Orwellian nightmare. This man who never had less than an impeccable record can hardly believe he's living through. Most Americans are astonished. Uh, that in America you could be terminated from employment for expressing your thoughts and beliefs. Cochran put those beliefs in a book to help men in his church deal with shame. For instance, escaping sexual shame by explaining why God created sex. The purpose was procreation uh, and that procreation can only occur between a man and a woman and to do it in a way that honors God, it has to be done in holy matrimony. And led to such outrage that firing the chief apparently wasn't enough for the mayor, Kasim Reed. According to Cochran lawyer David Cortman, the mayor delivered a strong threat. I will make sure you will never work in this city again. And so he is aggressively going after the chief to make sure he cannot get another job. Pastor Michael Youssef, a friend of Cochran's, calls his firing incredible. And if it's happening here, then be ready is going to happen everywhere. Cortman hopes to stop this trend by getting the courts involved. We think it's important to establish that principle that it's not okay for the government to tell any citizen that your beliefs don't line up 100% with ours, which by the way, no one's does, regardless of where you are. Tinder just got a whole lot more inclusive. As of Tuesday, users on the dating site have dozens of new gender identity options to choose from, 37 new options to be specific. It's pretty significant because prior to this update, Tinder users could only select male or female. Now, Tinder users can select from options like trans, bi-gender, or gender questioning when filling out their profiles. Last year, transgender users reported getting kicked off of Tinder and said it could have been because of their gender identity. Although a Tinder spokesperson told Business Insider each banned account is individually assessed, there were no safeguards at the time that prevented those alleged bans from repeatedly happening. Tinder is certainly not the first tech company to become more inclusive. Facebook added at least 50 alternative gender options to its roster in 2014. And in an effort to combat online harassment, Twitter just expanded its mute feature, so users can block certain keywords or phrases from showing up on their notifications. Tinder's CEO Sean Rad said the company will continue adding options to its list of gender identities. The town of Archbold, Ohio has removed its towns from its town seal, government buildings, street signs, and other documents. It was a church at the center. It's now gone. A Christian church was the symbol in the middle of the seal that was surrounded by other industries. Archbold has also stopped calling itself a Christian community on its website. The decision to remove the church came after complaints from the Freedom From Religion Foundation. The village website now shows the state of Ohio's shape instead. 
that sweet sound won't be going anywhere soon. People once worried if Donald Trump did not win the election, their gun owning and shooting rights would be gone. I thought Hillary was going to win the election and she had said she was going to try and get rid of uh, military weapons. So I decided to go ahead and just pull the trigger on it. Democrat David Banner had been looking for years to buy his second rifle. And like many of Doug's shooting sports customers, he went ahead and jumped the gun. <laughs> And even though Trump won, he's still going to hang on to it. I probably would have waited another year or so. Sales manager Dave Larson felt that pre-election anxiety from his customers. I did have one gentleman order a gun from me on Tuesday. And then after the election results came in, he called me up and said, I don't want it anymore, Dave. Let's cancel that order. I asked him point blank. I said, is this because Donald won? He said, yeah, kind of. With the Trump election, sales have slowed over the last week. If Hillary had one, I probably wouldn't be talking to you because we'd have a store full of customers right now. But he is not upset over it, and neither is his competition. Discount guns and ammo. There was some awareness. There was uh, some apprehension. And we had a number of customers come in and say, we want to do this while we can. We're not sure where things are going. While a big sales spike would have been nice. So I think the pressure's off for a little while. With Trump's win, both store owners say they feel bulletproof. <laughs> Until the next election. We're going to suspend immigration from terror-prone regions where vetting cannot safely occur. Radical Islamic terror is right around the corner. We have to be so tough, so smart, so vigilant. We can't allow that to happen. We have enough problems. All vetting of people coming into our country will be considered extreme vetting. We will be very careful. President-elect Donald Trump's push for extreme vetting was a major talking point during his campaign. And now, reportedly, the incoming administration may be considering a registry for immigrants from countries with large Muslim populations. Police in Kosovo said simultaneous attacks by ISIS have been foiled. The planned attacks included one targeting the Israeli national soccer team. A statement issued Thursday said 18 people were arrested in Kosovo and six more across both Albania and Macedonia. According to police, explosive devices, weapons, electronic equipment and a drone were recovered. They added that the groups were coordinated by two Albanians who are part of ISIS in Syria. Reuters quoted a police statement as saying that the cell was planning to commit terrorist acts in Kosovo and also an attack against the Israeli football team and their fans during the Albania-Israel match. One of the world's most famous scientists, Stephen Hawking, says our planet has an expiration date. Don't freak out too much though, it's probably not going to affect you. Hawking said in a lecture at Oxford University, he doubts humanity will last for another 1,000 years, unless we can move on and inhabit Mars or another planet. The famed physicist said dwindling resources on our big blue planet means we humans will eventually have to find another home. Hawking added that threats like nuclear war, climate change, or artificial intelligence run amok a la Terminator could make humanity's time on Earth even shorter. Researchers at the University of Illinois might be one step closer to increasing the world's food supply by modifying plants' genes. Thanks to funding from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the researchers were able to use genetic engineering to alter photosynthesis in tobacco plants, increasing their productivity as much as 20%. This is a big deal because past experimentation with genetic modification hasn't gone as well. Plant breeders typically achieve gains of 1 or 2% with more traditional approaches. The scientists started with tobacco because it is especially easy to work with, but their ultimate goal is to transfer the research to food crops. One of the project's leaders believes it'll eventually be possible to get production increases of 50% or more. That kind of production could transform global agriculture. The Gates Foundation wants to ensure the technology makes its way to African farmers at a low cost, should it pan out. There's been talk of gene editing and really getting high tech with seeds. Of course, there's some controversy over that. How, how, big, of a, how big of a role do you think technology and, and uh, gene editing may be used to, to really tackle um, the food problem? Yeah, what are called GMOs are done uh, by changing the genes of the plant. And it's done in a way where there's a very thorough safety procedure. And it's pretty incredible because it reduces the amount of pesticide you need, uh, raises productivity, uh, can help with malnutrition by getting uh, vitamin fortification. And, you know, so I think for Africa, this is going to make a huge difference, particularly as they face climate change. 
the increased productivity and resilience mm -hmm. of the seeds, most of which will come from the new scientific techniques. So the gene editing just allows that to be done in a more precise way than it's ever been done in the past. So it'll, it'll accelerate the rate of innovation. I got this one for you. Human gene editing has arrived in China. Gene editing is where you take a gene out. I mean, you really take things out of your genetic system. That's right. That's editing out, correct? Yes, hugely well, okay. important because most diseases, Stuart, occur when some gene goes awry and mutates and creates a protein you don't want okay. that causes the disease. So now, you can, now in China, they've started doing this on human beings, is that correct? Because, yes, because of cancer. Because cancer has a gene on its surface called PD-1 that goes in there like in a spy game and tells the immune system, I'm not here, I'm invisible, you can't see me. Guess what? the gene editing does it edits the part out of the immune system that responds to that so now suddenly the immune system is seeing pd1 and attacking the cancer we already have drugs that do that but they cause side effects okay. immunotherapy does it this is cleaner and and it, it won't cause the side effects but it's you're opening, exciting it is exciting but you're opening pandora's box why can't I go to the gene editing people and say, you know, I'd really like a white, blue-eyed, blonde-haired baby, please. And they can deliver. Pandora's box opened up. No? Has to be. This is a huge uh, it's, it's situation of, of debate in the scientific community. It's got to be highly regulated. But, I completely agree. Designer but, but babies but could come from it. this. Designer babies could come from this. I'm very worried about that. But you have to have this yes, to you cure do. disease. Yes. The U.S. drought monitor map released on Thursday expects that the Northeast U.S. drought will continue into February. Drought conditions are expected to slightly improve in certain parts of upstate New York. According to the Associated Press, this is the worst drought in more than a decade. It has dried up drinking wells and lake levels have dropped significantly. The drought has struck an already dry southwest much more harshly, and it is expected to persist there as well. The dry conditions have caused an uncharacteristically high amount of wildfires in California mountains this past summer. O cenário é lamentável porque nós estamos vendo a própria polícia protegendo uma câmara de, 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 de deputados de bandidos, entendeu não? Que a verdade é o que está acontecendo. Né? São bandidos chefiados por um outro, um outro grande bandido, que é o Sr. Pisciani. Esse é o grande bandido da, 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 do estado do Rio de Janeiro. Patients marched through downtown Caracas, waving their prescription and calling for the government to do something to solve the extreme 85% shortages of medicine in Venezuela. President Maduro's government has agreed to receive humanitarian help from other countries as part of Vatican-led talks to solve the political and economic crisis, though there's been no indication when Venezuelans might actually receive that aid. It was a bold move to catch counterfeiters and tax cheats off guard. While the rest of the world was watching the U.S. elections, India's Prime Minister making a surprise televised announcement to pull all 500 and 1,000 rupee banknotes. In a nation where two-thirds of all transactions are in cash, Narendra Modi knew there would be some unruliness in the days and weeks that followed what's being called demonetization. He's asked for 50 days patience. But was he really banking on this much chaos? An entire nation making a beeline for cash machines with farmers, shop sellers, and basically all those who don't have a credit card or live in town suddenly unable to buy and sell. Those who do have cash under the mattress have to get to the bank however far in what one Hindustan Times columnist calls perhaps the most economically and socially disruptive act the world has seen since China's cultural revolution.
What you're about to see is now becoming the norm. It seems that cash in Stockholm is becoming a dirty word. I'm sorry, sir. We don't accept cash. How long will Swedes continue queuing for their krona and using them for their purchases? The answer is maybe not that long at all. Sweden already uses less physical money than any other country and could be set to become the world's first cashless society over the next few years. Finally tonight, America Strong, the son in Florida, helping his mother in the most important way, his split-second move seen by so many. Tonight, the miracle catch now seen by millions. The camera set up in the baby's room, capturing it all. 35-year-old mom, Tila Levy, turns away for just a moment. 11-month-old Eton on the changing table. The baby begins to roll every parent's fear, and then he tumbles over the edge. Out of nowhere, his older brother, 9-year-old Joseph, catches him. I just yelled mom because I saw the baby and I just ran and I caught him. But I can't even carry him. So I don't know how that happened and I can't even run that fast either. Tila is a stay at home mom juggling five children in all, a set of twins and Panda the dog too. She posted the video because she knows every mom realizes all it takes is a second. Joseph won't soon forget. And I ran all the way here, went cross handed and caught him in the air. I felt like something came and just pushed me forward and then when that happened I just ran and caught him. At first I said I messed up, I did something wrong, but then I realized that really it was just a miracle. I must have done something right to have been deserving of this little guy running in at the right time and catching him in the right moment. 